Hey folks, welcome back. I am very excited today to share something brand new with you guys and it sort of relates to something I've been talking about, well, maybe a month or two ago. And what that is, it's something to help me when I'm out slugging around in the bush. Now, before I get any further here, you guys have probably seen, if you've been around the channel before, I'm often out in the bush and I'm usually pretty far from any given trail and I'm cutting wood or dragging wood or trying to drag wood or get it up to a trail so I can hook up to it with my tractor. Now, what I've got to show you today is going to help me get that material, whether it's a big tree or section of log or who knows what, up to an area where I finally can hook my tractor to it and drag it out to wherever I'm going to use it. If it's a big log, well, I can drag it out to my sawmill, I can cut it up and do all that sort of thing. This is not what some of you guys thought it was going to be. I know many of you thought that I was buying a tractor winch. And although I would really like one, it's definitely not in the budget right now. If you guys have ever priced one out, they're not cheap. So I didn't get a tractor winch. And when I talk about a winch, it's one of those ones that go on the back of a, a three-point hitch on the, uh, on the tractor, run off the PTO. I would like one of those, but I don't have the cash at the time to buy it. Uh, so I went with something else. And this, to me, I think is going to be equally as valuable because it's very, very versatile. Uh, to be honest, it's probably more versatile than having a tractor winch because the tractor winch would force me to have uh, at least the material relatively close to where I can drive the tractor. I can't drive the tractor in a lot of places on the property that I'm using it on. And as a result, that type of winch probably wouldn't work in 100% of the circumstances. This will. Without further ado, let me show you what I'm talking about. This right here is something that I put a lot of time and effort into researching. This right here is something I finally greased my wallet just enough to open it up to buy. This is something that I bought with my own money. This is something I'm going to show you guys today because I'm very excited to get this out and put it into action. So here we go. So if you guys don't already know what a Lewis winch is, basically it is a winch system that works with a chainsaw. Now, as you guys know, I do not have hydro everywhere, especially where, where I'm out working in the bush, but I do tend to have gasoline that I can put in my chainsaw, and I do tend to have this chainsaw with me most places. This is the power head that's gonna run this winch. Now, I just started pulling out these, uh, these staples here. And the reason I did that is I wanna have a look inside, and before we go any further, this is my first look at this. Uh, with the exception of starting to pry out the staples, so I'm going to be equally as excited as you guys, at least I hope you're excited, to uh, sort of see what this Lewis winch is all about. I've never seen one in person, I've only seen it on the internet, so this is my first look here. <clears throat> and if we have a look here, first things first, you guys see that up there? First things first, we got our owner's manual, not too big, so that's no problem. Pull out our wrapping. You guys want to see how it's wrapped? You see in there? Nothing too uh, too fancy. Got some hardware. More hardware. Oh, there's the brake element. I remember seeing that in some of the videos. And I'm gonna have to put this down to get out the actual winch itself. And holy smokes, I can tell you that is solid. Okay, we'll uh, take the plastic off in a minute. There's just something else in here I want to get out. And here we go, it looks like the winch cable. Okay, here should be the winch cable. So, this is what you're getting. Let's, uh, let's lay this out a bit. You guys see what we're dealing with. Let's get down to this thing though. This is the actual thing that you're spending the moolah on. Bag off here. Oof, that's a solid unit right there. Look at that, almost matches my chainsaw. That is the Lewis winch. This is what I'm looking forward to. This is what I'm gonna be putting the cable on, and this is what I'm gonna be powering it with. So I have not seen one of these in person before, and uh, if we just start to have a look here, the first thing I can tell you, this has some weight to it. This is solid, like, look at the steel on there, eh? That's pretty, that's pretty good. Uh, the first, uh, first thing I'm gonna say, aside from it being solid, is it's got some weight to it, but weight tends to mean it's probably built very well. It might even be overbuilt. I'm having a look at this and 
definitely I don't see actually I see one piece of plastic is this plastic that's a piece of metal I don't think I see a single piece of plastic on this thing and uh, that to me at least in my experience is generally a good thing you guys can see if we spin it around here nice uh, nice handle there they even took the time to have uh, have some embossing or whatever engraving in there lewiswinch.com Here's where you're actually going to have the uh, the power head attached, so the saw attached to it. Uh, my saw is going to attach to it, which I'll show you. This folds out. The fair lead here, you guys can see the fair lead. Uh, boy, does that feel solid too. So the cable will ride through there and obviously go onto the, onto the spool. Spin it around a little bit further. Uh, I believe well, I'll have to read about it because I don't I don't know a lot about it yet because I'm brand new to it But uh, this will spin um, This will spin when you uh, engage the uh, chainsaw when you start the chainsaw up to actually move the cable in This will spin, but we'll learn more about that. So definitely looks cool Let's see what's On the bottom here The very bottom here from what I've seen this is a spot where you actually uh, anchor to whatever your anchor is going to be whether it's a tree or the ground or a trailer hitch that's what's going to hold the winch back from being pulled in towards uh whatever it is it's uh pulling all right let's put that down okay so first and foremost before some of you guys get off get after me about the size of this chainsaw uh, i have talked to lewis winch about the size of the saw i have looked up reviews online some people say that having a saw of this size, this is a Husky 555. Some people say that having a uh, 59 point whatever 60cc saw like this and hooking it up to the Lewis winch, well, that's chainsaw suicide. But others have said this is right around the perfect size. So I don't really know what's going to come of it. All I know is I own this chainsaw. This is what I'm going to hook up to the winch and I'm going to try it. If it turns out that this chainsaw is going to have the clutch burned out of it, uh, I'm not going to abuse it to that point. I will then look at alternatives. Maybe I'll buy an older saw um, that I can hook up to it that's slightly larger. But for now, we're going to use the Husky 555 Auto Tune. What is it? 4.3 horsepower, uh, 59 point something cc. We're going to use that. And uh, we're going to use the universal adapter to get hooked up to the Lewis winch. And the reason we're doing that is because of this guy. On some of the newer Huskies, you guys are going to see an outboard clutch like this. So the clutch is outside. Um, on the inside there, see it in there where my finger is? There's the sprocket. If this clutch was right against the engine and the sprocket was on the outside, well, then you could essentially mount it right here directly. But that's not the case for me. So let's get her hooked up and you guys can have a look at it.
Well guys, I uh, made the first mistake here. I put this little bar here on upside down. I guess that's my second mistake. I dropped the wrench. This has to go the other way, so I'm just gonna take it off. Some of you guys are probably also saying I should be putting Loctite on all this, and I agree with you. It does say that in the manual. Uh, however, the reason I'm not putting the Loctite on right now is for issues just like this. I don't know how this goes together 100% yet, so I wanna make sure it's functional before I lock her down. Anyways, let's uh, button her up. And I'm sure this will be a lot easier the second time. So guys, I just took a little break here, but I'm now back. Uh, what I was doing was I did have everything buttoned up, as you saw. I put on the cover and I was tensioning the uh, the chain, essentially. And despite the fact that I tightened this screw here, as you guys know, that moves the bar forward and back. Despite the fact that I tightened that as far as I could, as I could uh, get it, the chain was still loose. And so I realized I had to take out a link on the chain. So I ducked out for a bit and uh, got that taken care of. The chain is now one link less. Now this is a Husqvarna 555, so if you have this model, just keep that in mind. Uh, you might have to take a, take a link out. Anyways, we're ready to put this back in. You guys can see everything is all set up. Uh, another thing I just did was I went ahead and I added Loctite to all the, all the nuts and bolts, uh, rather, that needed it, so we should be good to go. So I'm gonna try to... Get this into place here. And what I'm what I'm basically doing, see that particular um, I don't even know what you call it, the uh, the piece that goes into that hole there to uh, tension the chain, basically moves that bar forward and back. The big thing is I got to get that lined up with that hole. So as I'm positioning this, I'm trying to see where that'll land. There we go. And I'll just get the screws started here. Okay. Now we should be able to tension it. Hard to do this this way. I gotta come around the side here. There we go, and you guys can see, I don't know if you saw that gap increasing a bit. It's got to get the chain tension properly. All right, and we'll, uh, we'll go with that for now. Okay. That is that. I think we are all set. I'm going to start this thing up and we're going to run it without the uh, winch cable on to start just so you guys can see it in operation. So here we go. Oh, 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 oh,
guys as you can tell that thing's pretty noisy inside here uh, everything looks like it's in good operation and that's the main thing so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna fire back up in a moment and I'm gonna put all this cable uh, I think there's 150 feet of it I'm gonna put all this cable onto the spool and if we have a look at what that uh, what that's like let's see if I can unlock this with one hand here <laughs> come on don't exactly know how to do this there we go I guess it'd help if I uh, did this a few times anyways I just unlocked the spool uh, just so it can freewheel what you'll notice here there's a hole and the hole goes all the way through to the other side you can see it there that's where the end of the cable goes and now they have a lock or uh, not a lock screw a set screw there that clamps down on the end of the cable and then I'm gonna engage the uh, the winch again or engage the spool start it up and then i can use my one hand to feed it on and yeah put it on nicely hopefully so that's the plan a little chilly out here so i gotta get to work here we go i almost forgot to put the end of the cable through here through the fair lead and uh well if i would have rolled this all the way up on the spool I wouldn't have been able to get it through after and then I would have had to undo it all and do it all again. So don't, uh, don't make that mistake. Let's try this again. There we go. Now we're, now we're on it. Right, guys well that was definitely the hardest task out of this whole operation here and it was probably hard because the wire had a little bit of memory to it and so it wanted to sort of uh well wrap amongst itself so you guys saw me fighting it a little bit nothing i can't handle definitely make sure you got the gloves on for that one but i've got 150 feet of the wire spooled on here and as you guys can see it doesn't leave a lot of room for extra to be expected that's the maximum you're supposed to have on there if you are going to use less than 150 feet, uh, the manual recommends you cut it down, and I can understand why. You don't want to be playing around with that full length if you don't have to. Some other things that the manual mentioned that I'm probably going to do is add a bungee cord on the brake handle here. And what that does is when you are pulling wire out to go hook it up to something, it makes it so it doesn't free spool. If it free spools, you have the potential to get a bird's nest in here. And as you guys can imagine, that can pretty much ruin your day. So I'm going to hook a bungee cord on that hole there and then I'll hook it up somewhere back here I don't know exactly where and that'll just put a little bit of pressure on it and prevent it from free spooling so that when I pull it if I stop pulling for a moment to walk a little bit further or whatever it doesn't want to keep going on me so I'm gonna add that aside from that I got to oil this up a little bit I think it's set in the manual a little bit of oil on the chain there there's gear oil 8090 already in the uh, in the winch itself uh, I'm going to turn down the bar oil on my chainsaw because if you guys look down there, it's starting to get all over. So I probably don't need the oiler turned up that much. So we'll crank that down. And you guys will also notice here, check that out. If I didn't uh, remember to run the wire through this fair lead first, well, you guys can just about imagine I'd be unspooling that right now because this does not go through there. So I think that's about it. That was a, uh, well, that was a bit of a learning curve for me. And if you guys do this a time or two, you'll probably get it faster than me. As I mentioned, there is a really good manual and it's over there. Make sure you check that out if you got one of these. I have no experience with this at all. As I mentioned, this is my first time seeing it. Overall impressions, this thing is stout. This is one of the most solid products or uh, solid tools that I own. 
in terms of um, you know metal thickness and overall quality so I think this is definitely going to be a, a very useful tool around here and something that can take a beating which when you're out slugging around in the bush that's pretty much inevitable next time around guys I'll be out in the bush because I'm going to put this into action I got a whole bunch of logs down on the ground as you guys know it's now covered up by snow probably frozen to the ground but we'll get out there and see how this thing does this is hooked up to my 555 Husky 60cc chainsaw that is going to be what we tested out on first if it turns out to not be working too well with it maybe it's underpowered we'll find out then i'll be bumping up to a bigger saw we'll cross that bridge when we get there when we get out to the bush what i'm going to do as well i'm going to bring a snatch block along with me if i need to i can use that to increase the pulling force but i'm hoping i don't need it so guys that's just about it for me here today as you can tell it is a little chilly out today Kind of want to put the gloves on, which is a little, uh, I don't know, it's a little different for me. I don't tend to wear a lot of gloves, so I almost want to put those on, which tells you it is cold. I also want to get back in and grab myself a warm coffee. Guys, if you are brand new here, check out all the videos I got out for the channel. There's all kinds of stuff. You can have a look and see if any of it interests you. And if it doesn't, well, I'm glad you watched this video nonetheless. For everyone out there, hit subscribe, hit like, and I'll see you.